Welcome back to another video my friends. My name is Bijan in case anyone is new here and in this video we're going to be going over a quick day trade that I did in which I made a, let me close this down here, kind of ugly there. I made a $2,500 profit trading Baidu. We were shorting shares again in this trade here so I'm going to kind of you know take a little bit more time explaining it. I noticed that it takes a little more time to explain shorting because I like to break it down for some people that might be new. Um, but overall, it was a day trade, basically from the beginning of the day, right around 6.30 until I closed it out pretty much right before the end of the day. Uh, I didn't want to hold the trade overnight because it was a shares trade, and I don't really like to hold um, trades that I shorted the shares. I don't like to hold short trades overnight. I would prefer to hold puts overnight. Uh, but that, that's just a whole different story. I don't want to start going off and teaching a whole separate thing here. Um, but anyway, so this trade, we were trading Baidu. Uh, we were trading it to the downside. We were shorting it, which means you make money when the stock goes down. Now, this trade was directly from the watch list as well. So just as a side note, a little plug here. If you were ever interested in joining our watch list or trying it out, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. So you can go ahead and take advantage of a special offer that I put together just for the month of November here. It's just something I wanted to try out for people as, you know, people had been asking if I had any trial offers or anything like that. Uh, now, I can't make it 100% free because then everybody would sign up and it would kind of lose the value of it. It would flood everything. Uh, but I significantly discounted the first month and you can cancel at any time. You don't, there's no like commitment if you don't want to continue. So anyways, now that I talked about that, uh, this trade was directly from the watch list and we'd basically been watching this trade around the 145 area. Now, this is basically why this 145 area was of significance. I'm going to remove this line just so that it doesn't mess up with my whole uh, explanation of the trade. But you can kind of see it was a key resistance area, key resistance area, kind of struggled with it up there, uh, you know, but still resistance. So that's basically where I was watching this Baidu at was around that area there. Now let me get rid of the line so it doesn't mess up with the trade here. And that's basically what happened. Now, the way it goes, not like I'm trying to teach the watch list here. I'm not trying to plug the watch list. I'm just now talking about how how I do what I do. Uh, I have a list, list of stocks that I watch, as you should as well, regardless if it's from me or not. Uh, but you should have a plan for everything that you want to do. I have a plan for a few trades. Not every single thing that I have a plan for is going to work out. I might say, hey, I want Baidu to go up to the 145 area. And it might not even go up to the 145 area. Who knows? It might just gap down, be at a certain different area. And that's that. I let it go. I go to the next thing on my list and say, okay, what's on my list? Am I watching this for that? And whatever works out according to my plan, that's what I will enter. So I'm hopping around, looking at this, looking at that, seeing what I have on my watch list, seeing what's actually working out near its levels of our entry. And I see, oh yeah, here's Baidu right around approaching that 145 area. So that's where I come in and I want to basically short it. Now there's a few various reasons why I want to short it. Again, if I tried and teach the whole entire idea of like trading to you guys in one lesson, we'd be here for like 15 hours pretty much that's that's the duration of the course that I offer uh, I'm not trying to plug that don't worry I'm just giving an example here but I'm going to talk about a few things uh, that made me want to short this first of all the market itself I mean aside from why I had planned for it a few more other flashlights if you will I don't want to uh, confuse anybody there uh, the market itself it wasn't doing anything too crazy you know the Baidu was like spiking up out you know towards that resistance area but the market wasn't doing anything too crazy you know it's not like he was like shooting past this area mind you this was like within the first 10 minutes 639 is when i got in the trade so that the market's just kind of dropping and chopping and not doing anything too exciting there so i say okay well then let's go look at the other stocks within that similar sector chinese stocks ba baba well, ba -ba, baba's just saying bye bye ba you know what i mean he's not even doing anything exciting here he's dropping out so i said all right man this isn't really that heavily fueled on this probably gonna you know drop out uh rather be on the short side of it that's what i had mainly been watching it for as well is if we can get a push to the 145 area uh th that's basically that now that i kind of gave you guys the whole trade plan of where i wanted to short it where i wanted to get puts why i wanted to short it all the extra flashlights of course there were a few other things that went into it as well um but this is what i like to try and say is you know you want to be like a doctor in the stock market you know Obviously, if you're going to trade stocks, you want to be like a doctor. You know, the doctor will put his little stethoscope or whatever it is that he puts in his ears and, you know, he puts it up to your heart and he wants to listen. You know, maybe he puts it up to your back. He tells you to take a deep breath. He's listening. You know, he might put it to your heart and hear a beep, beep, you know, beep, 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 beep. And he might say everything's fine. You know, he might hear beep, 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 beep. 
beep, beep. He might say, whoa, 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 something's wrong there. Then he might tell you to go and get your heart scanned, and he might, might realize, oh, yeah, I have a heart murmur. And you might say, oh, my God, how did he know? What a genius. No, he just understands his craft, guys. Same thing here. You got to understand your craft. You're not going to go jump in to being a doctor without learning about it, are you? Yeah, you're probably going to kill your patients. So same scenario here. There's all these things of reading the heartbeat of the market. You have your plan, various reasons why I wanted to do this. Then you can confirm it by looking at other things as well. Then confirm it by looking at something else behind it. You know, you get what I'm trying to say. It's not just one thing. We're not blindly th throwing things out here. Um, again, guys, I'm trying to give you as much education as I can here. Uh, trying to be fair to everybody. I don't want to just blatantly give everything out for free here when, you know, I have my students, of course, that, you know, learn from me as well. But anyways, that's besides the fact now you guys know the whole breakdown of everything that I was looking at here, at least the majority of it. And this is basically where it played out. Now, it kind of dropped out after a little while, you know, chopped around there. I didn't get the exact top, you know, he kind of spiked up to the 145, 70 area there. Uh, but I had entered as he shot through the 145. Um, I usually like to short into strength. It's just a habit that I've had, especially out of being a st uh, options trader as well. Um, so I just wanted to short as it was still, you know, a little strong there shooting up. I didn't get the exact top, but it doesn't matter. We're not here to get the exact top, 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 and the exact bottom, bottom, bottom. And we're not going to cry if we don't get that. You know, we're here to get the meat of the move. We have our plan as long as it works out. That's all that matters. So it dropped out a little bit and we were at a decent profit here, but it wasn't my plan to just get out, you know, within like, you know, a dollar right there, 144. I could have, it could have been, could have been a play like that, but that's not what I was going for. That's not what the plan was. Uh, so of course he kind of bounced back up here. He was flirting with that 146 area, but he didn't get above it at all. Um, and he basically just completely dropped out. Um, and that's basically that. It took a little bit longer. I wasn't, you know, expecting it to take the whole entire day, but you know, thankfully I was trading shares. I didn't really have to worry about time decay or anything like that. Uh, now, once he did break back below the 143 area, that's basically where I started getting ready to close out the trade. Uh, let me go back and show you the orders. So we'll break down the orders real quickly. The total profit was 2,500. I got into it. I shorted 1,000 shares at 6.39 a.m. while the stock was at 154. I'm sorry, 145.31 there. Then at 11.44, I bought back. Now here's where the whole explaining the shorting and all that comes into play and why these videos get a little bit longer. Uh, if you're new to trading, Shorting is how you make money when the stock goes down. Now, a lot of new people get completely like mind blown. Like, what do you mean you can make money when the stock goes down? I didn't know that, this, that, and the other. Um, if you want to learn more about that, let me know in the comments down below. Say, hey, man, I want to learn more about shorting. Can you make a video about that? I'll be more than happy to do so. Um, I just don't want to make the video and seem like, oh, yeah, I'm here trying to teach people about something they already know. Um, so just in case anyone is new, shorting is where you basically borrow the shares from your broker. You don't own the stock. You sell the shares with hopes of the stock going down so you can buy those shares back at a lower price, you return those shares to your broker, and you keep the difference basically of what you sold it for and what you bought it for. So instead of buying it low and selling it high for the difference, now we're selling it high and buying it low, shorting. Uh, that's basically the idea here. Again, I'll be more than happy to give a more detailed one if you guys want, let me know. Uh, so I shorted 1,000 shares at 145.31, then, at 143.11, I bought back half of the trade. I bought back 500 shares. So basically, I closed out half of the trade. I covered half of the trade. And it was at about a profit of, if I'm not mistaken, that's a $2.20 profit. I had 1,000 shares. So technically, I was at a $2,200 profit there, but I only locked in half of it, 500 of the shares. So technically, I only locked in 1,100 of it, um, and I let the rest run. I wanted to see if maybe we can even get a flush all the way down to the 140 area, uh, but unfortunately, we didn't get that. We bounced around the 142 area there, and that's not to say that we won't go lower, we could definitely still go down to the 140 area. I'm not trying to say that there. Uh, but part of the reason why I decided to just close out the rest of the trade into the close, uh, one, I mean, it was already at my profit, my primary profit target, which was the 142.50 area. I was fine with taking the profit at that area, risk to reward wise, everything. It was, you know, a favorable risk to reward uh, ratio, if you will. Uh, but the reason I closed it out there 
is because, again, I didn't want to hold it overnight. I don't like to hold trades overnight where I shorted the shares. I just don't like it. I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, I've done it before. I didn't really like it. I've lost with it before heavily. So it's just, you know, part of my personal. Uh, this is why I say don't just follow people 100%. You know, have your own type of style, your own strategy, and, you know, a, a kind of adjust based on what you might learn from them or what they might spot that you might not have spotted. Uh, but anyways, long story short, I didn't want to hold it overnight because if I would hold something overnight in a short position or wanting it to go down, I would only want to do it with holding puts. Um, Anyways, that's besides the fact. So that's why I closed out the rest of the trade there. And I closed out the rest of the trade exactly at the 142.50 area. So I was in it at 145.31, closed out half at 143.11, and then I closed out the rest at 142.50 for a total profit of 2500 and that's basically how we made money with the stock going down. And if you recall, I'll try to do it off the top of my head in exact calculation. We said that this was where we locked in 1,100. And then the difference between 145.31 and 142.50 is around 280. So 280 times 500, because that's how many shares we had is 1,400. So we locked in the rest of the $1,400 profit right there, right before the market closed. So add the 1,400 from this 500 shares and then the 1,100 from this other initial 500 shares that we closed out. Um, and that's where you get the 2,500 total profit. I just wanted to make sure I did that math in case anyone was confused or got lost there. Uh, I know it shows it in a few different orders, but mainly I was out, you know, it was all at the same time, you know, 12, 58 ish. You know, it took a little bit of time to fill on that one. And then this one was exact. Again, this is all just like small technicalities. You know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but that's pretty much that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this lesson. I don't want to make it too long. We'll try to wrap it up here. Again, just like a little quick minute or 30 second recap. I was shorting the shares. We got in it around the 145, 145, 31 area. I closed out half at 143.11. Uh, the other half I closed out at 142.50, and that's pretty much that, guys. So I hope, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Apparently, it helps a lot. Hit the subscribe and you know turn on the notifications so you can be notified. Uh, and follow me on social media, Who's Bijan T? All of that, Instagram, Twitter. I also have another YouTube channel, Who's Bijan T? And I'll go ahead and put the links in the description below if you were interested in the watch list trial that I was offering or any of our other services or the course that I mentioned. Uh, but that's pretty much that, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you next time.